All right, guys, in this video, I have a 2012 uh, Kia Sportage, and what we're going to be doing is writing the VIN to a new PCM, and along with that, we are going to have to program the keys to the PCM. So we're going to be using the Hotel Maxi Sys for this. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go diagnostics. I already have everything connected. We're going to go Kia's right there, but we'll just go auto detect. And as you can see, it can't find the PCM. So we're going to go cancel. We're going to go Kia. We're going to go OK. We're going to go manual selection. We're going to go USA. We are going to go Sportage SL. Where is Sportage? Sportage SL. This is a 2012. And we have a 2.4. Now we're going to go to Diagnosis. We are going to go to Control Unit. We're going to go to engine. And we're going to go special function. And we're going to go to write VIN. So I'm going to take and I'm going to write the VIN. Yeah, yeah. And now this is the part where we put in our VIN. So, I'm going to put that in right now. Okay, so KNDP. See if that we have that right. KNDP CCA 25C7 308204. So that's right. Now we're going to go to that, we are going to go to here. It's asking you if you want to put in the VIN. We'll call this malfunction in P0630. Okay. Turn the ignition off. After 10 seconds, turn the ignition on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Press OK. And now we're going to check the VIN. And now we're going to go to a read VIN. And we're going to see if the VIN is in the system. And as you can see right here, it is in the system. So we are done with that. Now what we have to do is get out of this area. We're going to have to leave this one. We are going to have to go to our immobilizer. We have to go to special function. We have to go to learn keys, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a while, so. And as you can see, the status is virgin. So now we have to put in our pin code. Then we're going to press enter. And then we're going to press OK. First key is teaching. First, key. I don't have the second key. The client's going to have to bring me the second key later. So we're going to go to cancel. And we're going to press OK. We'll turn the ignition off. And we're going to check and see if our little immobilizer light turns on. And as you can see, well, you guys can't really see it, but it's right there up in the corner. So with that on, the car should start. Oh, my battery seems to be a little dead. I'm gonna pause you guys for a minute. All right, so I just put a booster pack onto the vehicle, so now we're gonna try start it. And it starts perfectly. So now I'm gonna to explain to you guys why we replaced the PCM on this one. And maybe I'll put the old PCM in and I'll show you guys what was happening. Um, this one had a issue when you would go to start it, it would stall out. And it would do it intermittently. So, 
I would have to take and turn it off, turn it on, and start it. Then I would leave it run. Now I'm going to try it again. I'm going to turn it off. I got to wait a few seconds. I wait to hear a click. I take the key and I go to start it. Now, what was happening was that there was a ground coming from the PCM that was hitting onto the, the main relay and it would basically kill the main relay which in turn would kill everything onto the vehicle and the vehicle would just stall out. So right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to redo this test a couple more times to make sure everything is working as it should, which I am hoping it is and I didn't miss any powers or grounds. I am pretty sure I didn't, but... Uh, and then I'll probably take and I'll put the old PCM in and I'll show you guys what was happening. Alright, so I just put the PCM back in and now I'm going to show you guys what this car is doing. I'm going to turn the ignition off. It might take a couple of times for it to do the default, but or it might do it right away. And as you can see, the car just stalled out by itself. And that's what... The initial complaint was the client would start the car, put it in drive, take off, and then the car would stall. So, but it wasn't really an issue with the vehicle being put in drive as to more the PCM. And as you can see right now, those lights turning on and off, that's because of my main relay is going on, off, on, off, on, off, and now it's on. So, I'm going to try to recreate this one more time for you guys. I'm not going to go over the whole diagnostic process that I did because it was pretty lengthy because of where all my powers and grounds come from. So, but I'm going to show you guys what was happening. Or I should say I'm going to show you guys what the fault was. See if I can get this to do it one more time for you guys. And there we go. So it just stalled out again. So as you can see, I, I can recreate it. It does take a couple times for it to get recreated. And if you've seen again, while well, my check engine light and my immobilizer light just flashed. Now, those are both powered up by the... Uh, the main relay which also powers up your PCM so so now what I'm gonna do is bring you guys up to the the PCM I'm gonna hook up an oscilloscope and I'm gonna show you guys some basic checks that I did up at the PCM which includes power and grounds and also includes a well just power and ground checks basically and also my ground coming out of my PCM going to my main relay which is what the issue is on this one All right, so I got the wiring diagram that I used, and what we're gonna do is we are gonna go over our power and grounds. Well, not all of them, but I'm gonna show you guys what I did in order to find my uh, my issue. Because as you can see, well, the vehicle was stalling. Now if I can find that, there we go. So. What then I ended up doing was I did a basic power and ground checks at my PCM. Now the important thing to remember is that the power and grounds come from the power distribution box which also in turn your IPM inside the vehicle sends powers out to your power distribution box to send powers to your PCM. So it was pretty lengthy that's why I'm not going to go through every single little step that I did. Uh, so I'm just going to go through the basics. Now if we come here we see that we have uh, pins 1, 3, and 5, which are my grounds. Okay. And if we come on to 2, 4, and 6, those are my powers. Now, there is another one, which is all the way over here, which is pin 51. 
Now they don't show this into the um, the wiring diagram. So you, I, so uh, that's why I use more the connector pinout than the wiring diagram for this one. Now what ends up happening is that you, all your grounds are at this junk, uh, this point right here, which is below on the front left shock tower all the way to at the bottom of the shock tower. It, they put it underneath the PCM pretty much. So that you have to remove the PCM to get to the grounds. So I took those grounds and I cleaned all those grounds even though they were good just to make sure. So all my grounds were good. So my next step was to check my powers. So what I did was I checked pins two, four, and six. And all my powers were good. Now when I came over to pin 51, when the issue was happening, I would actually lose my 12 volts onto here. So I was like, okay, why am I losing my 12 volts? That's when I realized that pin 51 is actually energized by my main relay. So I went to the PCM and I went and I checked for pin, uh, which pin was it? Where is it? 60, yeah. Pin 64, this blue wire right here. Okay, now this is my engine control relay ground. So if we come all the way over to this page. Sorry, I'm going all over the place. I'm just trying to show you guys what is happening. So this is basically my engine control relay, which is right here. And pin four gets a power, and pin 64 is my ground for my PCM. I don't know if you guys could follow that, but I have a constant power coming in onto pins 85 and 30, and then pin 86 is my ground from my PCM, and pins 87 and 87B are both powers that go out to various components. So, when the vehicle stalls, my engine control relay loses its ground from my PCM, which in turn, well, I lose my ignition coils, I lose my condenser, I lose all my injectors. Everything that is powered up by the engine control relay loses its power. So, I came over and I came onto my pin 64. Now, I have the oscilloscope hooked up right here, and I have it hooked up uh, reverse, so... Basically, my ground lead is on power and my oscilloscope lead is on to the pin 64 of the PCM. So when the issue happens, I'm going to try to get it to happen for you guys, hopefully. As you can see, I have a momentary loss right there. Now, right now you can see it clicking on and off. Try to get that both for you. I don't know if I'll be able to. Probably not. Yeah, there we go. See if it does it one more time. There we go. So I have a momentary loss of my ground signal. Now, when I have that momentary loss of ground signal, well, my engine relay shuts down and there's no more power going out to the system. So that's why this vehicle was stalling, and that was the whole issue with this vehicle was that the PCM low side driver would lose its, oh, eh, lack of a better word, it would lose its signal inside to turn on. And then it would turn off, and then it would turn back on, turn off, turn back on, and it would work intermittently. So, we're gonna do this one more time. That's me just turning off the key. Let's see if we can get this guy to stall out again, and there we go. And as you can see it, it's doing it again. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put back in the new computer. I'm going to show you guys what's happening with the new computer, which is the vehicle is actually working the way it's supposed to. So I'm going to pause you guys and then I'll bring you guys back. All right, guys. Here I have the new PCM installed. Here is my old PCM. And in case anybody is wondering, to date, I have not been able to use a used scrapyard PCM onto the newer generation Kia vehicles. Okay, the once the bin is locked in, it is locked in. I can honestly say that I've never been able to do it. So 
if anybody out there has been able to do it, please share. But to date, I have not been able to, so that's why we had to put a brand new one into it. So, with all that being said, the new PCM is installed. I still have the oscilloscope hooked up. And what we are gonna do now is turn off the car. We're gonna take and we are gonna turn the key back on. As you can see, it gets dropped to ground. And then we're gonna start it. And we're gonna watch for a, uh, a spike into the system. Nothing, we're gonna turn it back off. We're gonna turn the key back on. Wait a second. Start it. Do it again. If you noticed a while ago, it took about three, four times and then the issue would uh, happen, so. And as you can tell, with the new PCM, everything is working fine. Turn it back off. And turn it back on. Start. And I cannot recreate the issue with the new PCM. So I'm considering this one a fix for the stalling issue. And um this was more a video on to show you guys the process that I took in order to figure out that the PCM was uh, wrong, uh, was bad onto the vehicle. And there you have it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. And if you did, please think of liking, subscribing, and commenting. And I will see you guys next time.